Hello, Hiroja Saib, uh with another Hiroja Thought Bubble. You're wondering about the get up here, my little poncho, got some coffee, little hat. Well, winter is here, or at least the California equivalent of, of winter. It's like 60 degrees, which it's not even nippy really. It's just when it drops, it's gonna drop another 20 degrees when I get off work, so it'll be like around 45 maybe, 40-ish, and that's cold, at least it's cold for me. And I know all you, all you uh, East Coasters, you're like snow and wind and that's nothing. Well, let's talk about nothing when it's like 120 degrees and you got like a 10 to 13% humidity. And then we'll compare weather, weather uh, crybaby-ish tantrums, if you will. So, but anyways, what I wanted to talk about was uh, net neutrality. Um, Ajib Paji, I can't pronounce his name, but the head of the FCCC, uh, chairman made an announcement that they are going to remove net neutrality, the net neutrality rules, which were guidelines and uh, placed basically the internet and the ISPs under Title II, which allowed them to be regulated by the FCC, which basically was trying to put into law or into regulatory class, if you will, where was something that was kind of already done with the internet anyways, which all traffic was treated equal. It didn't matter if you were a little tiny blogger in the Midwest or even all the way out in India or China, if you get past the firewall. We're treated the same way that you would treat. Oh, look at that outfit. Aren't you looking snazzy there? <gasps> hey, with the boo. Oh, he's in <laughs> oh. oh, with the boo. Cute cute dog sorry I had to say something plus it was coming at me oh, anyways where was I oh we were treated equal okay you were treated the same when you your flow of information going through all the corridors we're treated the same everyone was connect instant almost instantly people were able to view download comment critique upload to a site same way same price there wasn't a peer a pricing tier for moving traffic across and that began to change when quite frankly some of the deregulations that occurred during the 80s and 90s started really kind of coming to fruition when a number of these legacy uh, systems these AT&T's these uh, Verizon Sprint basically the ISPs the individuals that the cable companies began to see their, their uh, profits drop in many different ways. And a lot of it had to do with just the change in habits and the fact that the internet was the primary means of which people were communicating. Well, if you're AT&T and a phone provider and people are not using minutes or landlines, that's, that sucks. Uh, they're using data. And they're only paying once. They're not paying all these multiple tier things that you have. Especially when you started as at and started buying content companies. You started getting into the content game like Time Warner with Verizon. You know, movies, television. And you want to be, basically get all the money if you will. And you want to control all that. Well, it sucks if someone like Netflix comes along. Has this backlog of libraries that people didn't think were of any value charges a price of all a cart for $7.99 to see all this information and was taking away some of your business if you're a cable company provider. Uh, if you're a DAT user, your people were using, you know, Netflix instead of your own, like, uh, was it Verizon has, like, something VGO or something like that. So it's all about profit. It's all about control. And there, there are simple ways to do this. Um, I personally think, you, you know, some of these companies need to be broken up. The hammer needs to be done, and it has to kind of be certain rules where you, if you're an ISP provider, that's it. You provide ISP. You can't be a content creator at the same time. Um, that's not an unreasonable thing. I think personally, with the way the internet has done, the way it's impact on our economy, the way it's impact socially, the way it impacts everything, that, you know, think of all the small businesses, just a the small micro businesses that people do that uh, maybe not necessarily make a living living you know they're not making 40k a year but they're bringing in some income you know uh, your bloggers your SCs your uh, 
maybe web, web designers, your, your social media influencers. Uh, a lot of these businesses did not exist. And if they did exist in some like kind of fashion, they were very small, very niche. The barrier is high. That barrier is dropping. So there's more. Now, like with more, there's going to be like a lot of rubbish. And that's fine. Uh, the market and people kind of went through the rubbish. And the rubbish kind of peels and piles away. and goes away, drops off. And you only get the best. And what has happened is you're getting a lot of the best. Just look at television. There's so much great television now that you're not going to watch a bad show. If someone tells you that something is like all right, you're like, do I really want to waste my time on all right? Or should I binge it? Especially if you're watching something like Weekly. You might like, eh, you know, there's, you know, a great movie coming on. There's a great documentary. There's a better television out there I can spend my time on. And this is creating better competition, I think. Um, it's created a lot of de depth and diversification in a lot of different businesses. And it's been very helpful and impactful. Now, the economics don't work for all certain different sectors when people utilize the internet, like you know, social media influencers or content creators, or even people do like Etsy. But it is getting better. Um, and I think it will get better. I think as, as technology improves, as people get better about marketing, about connecting, making social connections. Uh, I think 3D printing, when it comes to manufacturing, uh, gets more refined, if you will, where people are able to make things at home and at a mass level to where, if you think about, like for example, uh, using Etsy, you know, people knit, all right? Uh, knitting hats, knitting themselves, so maybe they have like a little knitting circle and there's four or five of them working in somebody's house in their basement and they're like knitting um, by hand, you know, little beanie hats and uh, scarves or things of that nature and that's their business and they all pull their resources and they work together to do this. Uh, maybe eventually they go at a manufacturing level or maybe they get so good that they eventually have their own like little um, knitting space where they have machines and things of that nature. But think of that, that sense by something that's done by hand uh, individually and do that on a 3D scale level where you are uh, 3D printing, I don't know, phone holders. They're custom made. They have like these reliefs on the back of the uh, case to where you feel it. It's, you know, a person's name or design or it's uh, etched in metal and it's good quality stuff. And this is something that someone does on an individual basis. They come up with a design, they, they print it out basically at home. Um, in their garage and they can do it at a mass scale instead of maybe uh, producing maybe, I don't know, like 10 an hour they can start producing 100 an hour and really, and still keeping the quality um, and the refinement and the, the distinction that makes their, their particular pocket good um, that's coming in some, in some ways it has already happened in other ways it quite hasn't but it's getting there and that's going to really change, dramatically change the manufacturing game but the, the means and the ability for people to create wealth for themselves. And all that can be hindered, I'm kind of tying it all together, if we have a tiered system where in order for someone to know you exist, you have to pay. You have to pay an obscene amount just for your little idea to get out there. And all it is is protectionism. All it is is protecting their already existing legacy systems that are being distributed or disrupted and and uh, displaced and replaced and taken out of the marketplace, if you will. Uh, it's also a hindrance of freedom of speech. If you look at all the social movements that have been basically happening since existence, the internet has seen more. Not only have they seen more under the, I would say, since 1990. Two, beginning with the uh, taking out the clipper chip. The clipper chip, if you're unfamiliar, was a chip that was going to be in nearly every single hard uh, manufacturing device, televisions, uh, phones, to where the government can uh, automatically listen in on you because they are the only ones that have the private keys to listen to this particular chip, which if anyone knows that's vulnerability, anyone can listen in. If the government can listen, anyone can listen in. Um, that was stopped. 
Um, and from since there, and it, it was organized primarily through internets and boards and still using like phone chains and uh, letter writing and things of that nature. But a lot of it was just stating through the internet, through discussion, through these boards and getting the words out and getting these email chains out there and getting these, uh, setting up these conferences and talking to people and things of that nature. That was kind of the, the beginning of that. Uh, you had other movements when it comes to like nuclear proliferation, gay rights, uh, minority rights, you name it, you know, Black Lives Matter, uh, the Arab Spring. A lot of these have benefited from the internet to be able to communicate instantaneously. There's no uh, additional fee for your communication to get out there on an individual level or using of the particular app uh, is widely distributed. There's no barriers unless, you know, for example, um, after the Arab Spring, uh, when the Egypt government went with the Muslim Brotherhood government slash military, they started, you know, people started shutting down the internet to prevent those type of formations of uh, social disorder or social gatherings, uh, social movements, if you will. Um, but the reason why I kind of bring it up in the sense is they began to get results. Results that were happening not just in within decades, but within weeks, within months, within like years. A lot of these social movements that had been around for decades, for centuries, addressing different issues like gay rights, um, let's go with gay rights, have been around for decades, for centuries, treating people who, because of their sexual preference um, equally for as far as jobs, housing discrimination. And these are still, still battles that are going on, but it's a lot better than it had been in decades past. The ability to get married and how all the privileges they're associated with that right because of the internet a great a great uh, acceleration and gathering of people with that issue came they'd be able to do videos blogs uh, say hey we're meeting up and protesting this particular candidate these are the reasons why and talking about it at nauseum to such an extent to the such a wide breadth of people that uh, they had not been aware of the issue, they had not been aware of a particular candidate's stance on the issue, uh, began to see the different sides of the argument and, and such clarity. Uh, it began to humanize the movement um, because you're seeing people within pictures, with video, uh, different types of posts, different types of stories, blogs, and things of that nature. It compelled and allowed for the movement to make significant progress. Black Lives Matter, another social movement. Uh, as a result of Twitter, primarily Twitter, Facebook groups, there was a significant raisement of awareness of something that, quite frankly, black people have been talking about for decades, you know, uh, officers planning drugs. And it's not exclusive to just the black community that's happening, but the, the actions of police officers. Planning drugs, making false statements, killing unarmed people for no just cause. This is all being videotaped, it's being distributed, people are protesting, talking about it. And as a result of it, you start seeing more um, body cams on, on cops. Uh, you started seeing more accountability with uh, police boards being developed. Uh, efforts being made to change legislation when it comes to law enforcement interactions. And at the same time, you saw uh, a pushback by government forces against these type of movements. But mind you, these movements and discussions have been around for decades. But because of social media, because of the internet, it became amplified. It, people became more aware. People began to realize that what was happening in their community wasn't just their community, it was everywhere. So if you want to prevent such social interactions, if you want to stop the progression of individuals, and then individuals forming groups and those groups becoming social movements or becoming um, better companies or even advocacy groups. Look at some of the different um, advocacy groups when it comes to, hey, see that, that over there? That's, that's not right. Whether it be like a business that might have, I don't know, bad sanitation practices, wage theft. Making it amplified and aware, you're going to stop that. You're going to stop that with this paid tier system. So I encourage you, especially if you're in the cryptocurrency space, you want to see you have to pay more to access um, your Bitcoin app, to transmit your Bitcoin transaction through the packets, 
through the internet infrastructure. I mean, mind you, you're already paying fees on top of that within the network. Now you have to pay for the network in itself to continue and proliferate forward. Yes, we have this, I talk about the satellites and the radio transmissions and stuff like that, but still, majority of people are using the internet. It's everywhere. I'm talking to you on a, on a phone, on a mobile device. This is how people communicate, right here, through this little device that I have, that's an iPhone 7 Plus. This is people's, basically people's window to the world, in their palm of their hands. And if you control the access to points, if you can control, slow down, you can manipulate people easier. You can prevent certain social movements forming. A lot of changes are happening. A lot of changes are scaring the shit out of people because people that have been in power for a very long time, certain subsets, certain sets of groups, they're threatened. They know that the clock is ticking and they're trying to grip as hard as they can, the best they can, without causing an actual outright, I don't know, rebellion or the usage of violence. If they can do this without violence, they're gonna do so. And this is one of the ways they can do that is by trying to stifle and suffocate the internet. I don't think it's gonna work. I think people are gonna invest in decentralization. I think people are gonna circumvent all of this, but that takes time and effort and takes money. But if you want to hit the masses, proliferation, or utilizing the existing network structure, you got to protect the network. And that network is the internet. That network is keeping net neutrality, keeping all information treated equally across the infrastructure space, and not having tiered plan systems, slowdowns, or any other economic stifling scheme that they're going to come up with. It's all bullshit. It really is. So that's it. This is my little mini rant, my advocation for you to either con con contact your congressperson, your senator, get on these email chains, get in these Facebook groups, tweet about it, talk about it. Even if you're not a citizen of the United States, contact your legislative individual. Let them know basically because of what America is doing, how it affects your business, how it affects you as an individual, unless you write a letter perhaps to the Congress, to the president to the president, um, put forth some type of stance how this is not the way to go, that this is not the way the internet should be treated, and that no country, no government should have this much sway over the, the internet structure that was basically developed and released for the world over to use. So that's it. Those are my thoughts. I uh, Thank you very much for listening. I'll point, post some information in the comment section below. To where you can make some contacts, uh, get with, uh, donate either your time, your money, or your efforts to the cause, and kind of prevent this uh, ridiculous vote from occurring. So until next time, to the moon.